Hi everyone, Shane Armin Rowe here. Today we're gonna look at Core Keeper 1.0 technical settings and performance. So there's three different options. You can run it as normal, which I'm assuming is DirectX, OpenGL, as well as one without mods, which I'm assuming defaults to DirectX. So we're going to take a look at a game well in progress, over 30 hours of gameplay, because the only real way to see how these sort of games perform is to have a fully loaded world ready to test. That's why I chose to do this. So we're gonna look at my settings real quick. Now, it's totally possible that you could alter these settings and get some sort of better performance, but I spent a couple of hours dinking around with this, trying to find the best bang for the buck. So this is what I got going on. Now, this is no multiplayer, solo player with a very well-established, well-populated world. Again, been at it for a really long time. Let's take a look at what this looks like. Okay, so I have a base here that is really well built out. If for those of you who've been far enough in the game, you know that this is pretty far along. I've got all the dynamic lighting stuff. I've got tons and tons of uh, building uh, equipment, the electrical uh, laid. It's, uh, it's a very well-equipped base. Now we're seeing a hard fixed FPS of 60. Now this is on the OLED deck. I would expect the LCD to behave similarly. Do a little combat here. Now I did not show any major combat. So possibly if you end up having a big giant screen full of those little orange slugs, you may see something that uh, slows it down. But usually what you would do is see slow down when you're inside large building complexes like we saw earlier in the video. So I'm just running around uh, trying to show you the different lighting, how it changes based on uh, uh, particle effects and things like that. So I'm, I'm pretty comfortable saying 60 most, if not all of the time. Again, we got some, we got a nice little mess of, of bad guys here, but I mean, you can see a lot more and uh, a lot harder enemies that uh, may not render the same results. I haven't been to a boss here in a while, um, but uh, yeah, so you can kind of see what's going on. I feel comfortable saying uh, normally uh, 60. We'll do a little harvesting just to see if maybe something about digging causes a differential in frame rate. And so far, uh, it looks fine. I think we're in pretty good shape here. Uh, it did not run this well prior to 1.0. I do remember it running at about 40, 38, 40. Um, but then again, I didn't quite spend as much time as I did this time configuring and changing the settings and testing. But yeah, there you go. It looks, it looks great. I'm trying not to do anything to kind of give away because part of the part of building, you know, these sort of crafting games is wondering what your next, you know, your next uh, big thing is going to be. But yeah, we'll get a bunch of particles here on the screen. We'll do a little digging around, knocking these roots down. Yeah, it looks fine. So again, I'm assuming this is DirectX mode. I am not using any sorts of Proton compatibility. This is out of the box running install and run. No, uh, no monkey business. All right, let's go ahead and get out of here. We'll save here at the house and we will return to Steam and we are going to try the OpenGL version of the game. You know, there's always uh, something different. There's always uh, uh, DirectX or Vulkan or OpenGL and each one you have to kind of try them to, to see what works best for a particular game. So we're back now in OpenGL mode. And again, we'll start the exact same map, exact lo same location and see how we do. I don't like the way that frame rates uh, moving around. Yeah, you can see this is this is a lot closer to the way it was running prior to 1.0. This is sort of what I was seeing early on when I was trying to play it on the deck. And honestly, it's it's oh, it's OK. It's OK. I could lock it to 30 and probably be happy. But if you're looking for that solid 60, uh, I don't think OpenGL is going to be what you're looking for. Again, totally playable. But uh, yeah, I mean, the game, once you've seen the game at 60, <laughs> you really don't want to uh, go back to something that's jumping around like this. So you could probably do 4040 if you're on the LCD, 4590 if you're on OLED. But, you know, why would you want to run an OpenGL when you don't need to? You can run in DirectX. Last but not least, 
we have a version of the game called the no mods version. Now I have no mods installed. Just so you guys know, there's no mods in here. So this should run exactly the same as the first attempt to run. But I did want to point out that if for some reason you're a heavy modder of this game, you may experience some problems that you may have to go ahead and run the uh, non modded version in order to get the performance you're looking for on the Steam Deck. Okay, let's take a look again, same place, same character, same everything. Let's see how we do. Again, we expect this to be no different. This should be absolutely fine. Same as the first, because I'm pretty sure this is running under direct decks. Yeah, everything's nice and silky smooth. That's what we would hope to see. Yeah, perfect. Again, there were no mods to turn off, so I wasn't expecting any sort of better performance. But uh, yeah, just to test it out and do due diligence, this is looking pretty good. It's been so long since I've played this game for real. I mean, I really, I mean, I put those 30 hours into this game back in 2022 and I, I just didn't stop playing it forever. That's why I've got, I'm as far into the game, I guess, as I am because I didn't stop playing the damn thing. Looks good. There is one more thing I wanna say about this game. For some reason, if you got it plugged into an external um, uh, display, like a TV or a monitor, for some reason, the audio doesn't go out through HDMI like it's supposed to. I have no idea why that is. I dinked around with it for about 20 minutes and I just figured I'd record the video, no sound, and put the soundtrack behind it. So if you are playing on a TV and you're wondering if anybody else has that problem, well, they do. And I didn't find a way around it, but if you do, leave a comment down below. And of course, uh, everything you see here, please uh, let me know what you think. Uh, is this performing well for you? Are you happy with it? I'm Shane Armand Rowe. Thanks so much for watching. Like, subscribe, hit the bell. You guys know what to do. Always appreciate you. And uh, thanks so much for watching. Check out some of these other videos right now on Monroe World. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.